My name is Skylar White. I am the author of And Falling Fly, and you're watching Austin Artists. When I was about four, I remember a specific instance. I was coloring, I loved to color, and I was coloring on the kitchen floor while my mother was ironing. And I looked at the coloring book and I realized that I'd been frustrated because of the poor drawing quality in the coloring book. And I thought, when I grow up or get a little bigger, I'm gonna draw better coloring books for children. I think uh, I had played as a kid. My parents were really supportive. And for my 12th, oh, I think I was maybe 11, they, for Christmas, gave me a sculpting kit that they had kind of put together. They'd been to the hardware store and they bought me a, a little propane torch and some soldering, thick gauge soldering wire and uh, some uh, soldering paste and uh, you know the whole kit for uh, doing metal work so I guess that was the start. The Downtown Alliance came to me because the Statesman I think was just building their building there or just moved in. It was a pretty major intersection but it didn't look so good so they kind of knew they needed to do something with the little triangle there. And uh, they knew that it was going to draw for bats, so they suggested a bat. And uh, I came up with all kinds of crazy ideas. And finally, uh, we uh, arrived at the one that is there. And uh, the fun part was the process of developing it and making sure that it was going to be safe. It has to withstand a hundred mile an hour winds because it's there in the Colorado River Valley right in the corridor where the winds can sweep <laughs> there probably won't be that high winds but it has to withstand that kind of wind if it has to so I remember installing a little model metal model on the top of the car and driving not a hundred miles an hour but on the freeway and uh, you know watching it through the sky the skylight and uh, just seeing what it did I think Mangia was definitely one of the most fun projects. The owner, Jeff Sears, was very uh, open to my ideas and he, he had a little delivery truck, pizza delivery truck with a warmer in the back and asked if I could turn it into a dinosaur. Now he said specifically, can you turn it into Godzilla? But later on, the lawyers from Godzilla came to tell him that you couldn't call it that and he had to modify it a little bit. That was a little unfortunate, but in the early years, that's the kind of guideline. I interpreted, I didn't copy Godzilla because I didn't really want it to be. There was much discussion about what kind of feeling, oh this is a good one, what kind of feeling, I asked, do you want this thing to have? Do you want it to scare small children? I could make it really scary. And he said, uh, he thought about it for a minute and he said, can you make it look hungry? And I said, I think I could do that. So I made him with his tongue sticking up like that. And uh, I think he looks hungry. So then they opened a, a store up north and he asked for a dinosaur inside the store. And I said, uh, oh boy. Do you want me to make him roar and for, you know, have a speaker in him and stuff? Oh, I don't think I can afford that, he said. Because you know how it is with new construction. There's enough to pay for. Well, I went ahead and installed a big speaker in his throat. And I went to the recording studio. For the first time I'd been in a recording studio. And I went... 
and the the guy amplified it and twisted it and added an echo and we had a lot of fun playing and then I got a remote control and a tape recorder in the back and so on opening day I unveiled the thing for the owner and pushed the button and it roared and he looked at me and he said how much I said mm, look see so he paid a little bit extra I think $500 extra for it to make this effect and people really enjoy it. The managers would, would hold the remote control and they'd wait till children got really close to it and then they'd push the button and, and the kid would go, ah. Well, yeah, I think the, the feeling behind whatever you're making is the most, the intent, is the most important part because so many subconscious um, abilities or aspects come into play if you have the intent correct. Hmm, ah, that's a good question. A favorite piece. You know, I think that the Manja truck, which is now deceased, sadly, they ran the wheels off of it. 400,000 miles, I think, and then somebody finally crashed into it. But I'm resurrecting the head. I, I salvaged the head off of it, and I'm gonna resurrect it and someday mount it like a trophy in their restaurant or something, I don't know. Um, but a, a favorite piece other than that, I think that the cat and the dog at the Town Lake Animal Center, they have a clean simplicity that I will probably return to. I, I, I love variety and in medium and in style. Sometimes I think, oh, I don't have a strong sense of style, but I just like variety. But if there's a sense of style that I would like to do more of, it would probably be either the bat or the cat and the dog, because reductionist. I, I like reducing things to their essentials. And well, you know, I'd always wanted to. I was raised in uh, England in the early childhood. My dad was in the service, and. Uh, we traveled through Europe in a big Dodge station wagon with a luggage rack on top. And uh, so I got early on a taste of Europe. And I always wanted to return to live long enough in a country to... I love language and culture. And I always wanted to completely become fluent in a language and sink into the culture to get more perspective on our own culture. And so, uh, while traveling in Oslo, I met and fell in love with a young woman who captured my heart. And uh, so, we were three years here together, and then it was my turn to go to the old country with her. And uh, um, Norway is the most beautiful landscape I've ever run into. I like Austin. You know, Austin is a new city. It doesn't have the ancient architecture and kind of unfortunately it doesn't have the old guard that collects art and the art collections and the institutions that are in place in older cities. But I wouldn't trade that for the vibrancy that Austin has and the liberality. You know, something about a young city forward-looking, active, a little naive and a little provincial sometimes, but this still wouldn't uh, trade for the, uh, the, the friendliness, let's face it, the openness. You know, the ongoing projects, the uh, giant uh, submarine sandwiches for thunder clouds, I think all the thunder clouds are going to have giant sandwiches on the roof. My intention with my work is to enliven the public space. I feel like there's just not enough humor and not enough frivolity and celebration in society. So I'm happy to have been able to add to the 
liveliness, the public environment. And I look forward to creating even more crazy, even bigger things out there. And uh, I think color is a big part of, it, it's kind of like I, I want to make giant flowers, but playful flowers that would uh, encourage people to stay optimistic and loving and uh, youthful. Mm -hmm.